Well, praise the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I am so delighted that we are back today. God is so faithful. We just give Him the glory, honor, and praise. And we are thankful to be here again teaching the Word of God to us and to you listening and watching. So we just thank the Lord. Dr. Kilaf for calling here. Kingdom Apostolic Ministries. Uh, international Kingdom Come Now Broadcast. But listen, more than that, we have the Word of the Lord settled and ready today. And so I want to begin with just this time of taking our needs and your needs before the Lord in prayer. I need you to do a few things. I'm getting ready to pray. We've already started praying here and saturated the atmosphere. And I'm telling you, we have a lot to cover today. The systems, the systems of this world are changing. They're crumbling. I've never seen it like this before in all the earth. But we can rest assured that we are part of an amazing kingdom, if you're in this kingdom. We have an amazing leader, and we are secure. Praise God, no matter what happens, those who know the Lord Jesus Christ and follow him are secure. They have an eternal security, and uh, it is wonderful. So we're going to just jump into this in a few minutes, but I just wanted to jump on here just for a minute to let you know, listen, we're getting ready for this word. Get your Bibles, get your pens, get your notepad. It's going to be wonderful, it's going to be impactful, it's going to be transformational. Amen? We just worship the Lord. We just thank the Lord for His presence. We just thank the Lord for His anointing. Sam, just come one minute, it's coming. Hallelujah. We'll just get ready to receive from the Lord today. Uh, just get ready to be blessed by the Lord. God bless all of you who are coming on, watching, liking, and sharing this broadcast. I need your prayer. Just double check that for me, please. As we get ready, thank you those who have commented. We just thank the Lord for all of you who have been praying and just seeking the Lord with us. Praise the Lord. Veronica, God bless you. Father, we just honor you. Father, we just love you. Father, we just bless you. Oh, we just honor your holy name today. We just bless your holy name today. We just love you because you are truly worthy to be praised. And uh, listen, there is none like you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Listen, listen. We're going to pray for you, Father, right now. Everyone, thank you, that is in this place worshiping you today, that has come to receive a word, I know you will not disappoint them. Thank you. I know you will not let them down. I know you will not disappoint because you are a God that does not disappoint those who are walking in faith and seeking you. And so for this, we will stop to give you all the praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. I ask you just quickly, thank you, Heather. Heather, we're praying for you and your family. Hallelujah. The Lord is going to do something powerful in your life, Heather. The Lord is about to change some things in your heart and in your mind and in your soul. Hallelujah. Your days of victory are going to be greater. Your latter days are going to be greater than your former days. Praise God. Veronica, get ready. There is a supernatural seed of breakthrough that's coming in your life. You've been believing. You've been praying. You've been seeking the word. And you said, Lord, where are you? I am here to tell you today, Veronica Brooks, the Lord has not forgotten you. He loves you and help is on the way. Praise God. Peter, those watching from India, I speak life over you, Peter. I speak prosperity. I speak favor to you. Get ready, Shalini. Peter, get ready for a mighty move of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. That's going to take place over your lives. Get ready to see His glory and His power and His grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just going to just minister and pray and worship. And you can share this with your family. If anyone needs a word from the Lord, hallelujah. Chantel, glory to God. Hallelujah. This is a new day. Hallelujah. I hear them talking about a new day. But truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Get ready for a new sunshine. Woman of God, I hear Chantel, new sunshine. Hallelujah. Some of you got your miracles over the last few days. Get ready. The Lord is not finished. Because some people the Lord just going to bless. Why? He's going to bless you because he's going to bless you because he's going to bless you. And there's no reason why he needs to do it. Praise God. God is going to bless you not because what you said, what you did, or what you didn't do. This is a season where the Lord said, I'm going to step in. I'm going to bless you just to show you that I love you. Praise God. You know, it's the love of God that leadeth man to repentance. It's the love from the Lord. 
It's us experiencing his love that's going to bring the miracle in our lives. Praise God. Uh, just go ahead and share this with a few people. There's a powerful word that we're going to share today. I'm telling you it's a word that I didn't share before. And I'm just getting excited about it because I know it's going to be heavy upon your life, upon your ministry, upon your families. Get your families surrounded today because your families are going to be blessed. I hear the Lord say, I want to bless families today. I hear the Lord say, I want to bless families today. Get your family, get your homes, get your children, get everyone that, that, that need to come around. Get them around because the Lord say, I want to just bless folk today. I'm just going to love on you today. I'm just going to uh, pour my glory upon you today. Are you hearing me? If you're hearing me, just say amen. If you're being blessed, just say amen. Hallelujah. I have a word for this city, for this nation. And for the nations of the world. Hallelujah. Why? Because the systems of the world are crumbling. Hallelujah. There are no answers. There are no solutions. People are scrambling. But I'm so glad that we are a part of a kingdom that doesn't fail. Praise God. I'm so glad that you don't need a whole lot of folk in your life. You don't need a lot of people loving you. You don't need a boss to like you. You don't need the whole family liking you. You don't need the community liking you. You don't need the, the, nobody to like you if you have the favor of God in your life. And I'm going to show you how to get the favor today. I'm going to show you how to walk in the blessing of God's government today. I'm going to show you how to receive the benefits of His holy kingdom. I'm going to tell you how to get favor with the king. Hallelujah. I'm going to show you how to, to know the king. Hallelujah. I, and I promise you, if you stay to the end, you're going to be tremendously blessed. Because at the end of the day, I want your life blessed. I want you to be able to teach this to everyone. Why am I doing this? Because, because the Lord put a mandate on Shalewa and I at Kingdom Apostolic Ministries. Because lives are dying. People are dying and going to a crisis hell. Not only in our country, but as we see people from around the world on this page. Many are dying and going to a Christless hell. They're going to a place without a time for repentance. And I want to let you know, enough is enough. The devil has had his time. It's now time for the saints to arise. The saints of God to take their place. You know, never before, I'm going to tell you right now, I've never been in a place where I've seen, you know, such chaos in the world. I mean, the educational system around the world, not only in our country, but every country that I see, I talk to you from around the world, whether South Africa or India or Indonesia or Malaysia, Hallelujah, Burundi, uh, Nigeria, United States, Canada, London. It's all in a chaos. Why? Educational systems are uncertain as to what to do. The healthcare systems of countries around the world are at a brink of collapse and are collapsing. There's uncertainty as to what to do and where to go. I've never seen humanity, every single country, just about 99% of them on the earth are grappling with the loss of life, the loss of economy, the loss of jobs, the loss of industry, the uncertainty of tomorrow, the hopelessness of healthcare providers, the frustration of union workers, the chaos of trying to provide for families. And I want to let you know, if you are not a part of a kingdom or a government that is stable and secured and certain, you're going to be in trouble today. Hear me? Hear me today. If you're not a part of a kingdom or government that is stable, I'm sorry for you today. I'm sorry. There's no preacher, there's no teacher that can tell you anything. That can change the course of where things are going now. Oh, you're going to get a house. You're going to get a car. What are you going to need that for? We need to be healthy. We need to stay strong. We need to stay alive. We need God's favor on us to keep us. And even if he chooses to take you or I or anybody, I pray he keeps us alive. But your life is connected to your destiny and if you have a destiny to fulfill if you have an assignment to continue to fulfill and yet it's in the design uh, uh, if it's in the will of God that you are still alive because you have a destiny that's why I challenge everyone to fulfill your destiny today 
If you're out of the will of God, you better get in the will of God. If you're out of your assignment, get into your assignment. If you're out of the purposes of Christ, get back in there. Because if you're outside, there's no guarantee that things are going to be safe for you. There's no guarantee. I'm sorry to say that. I know a lot of people won't say that. I know a lot of people won't share that. I know people are not going to, you know, you know, they're going to give you all kinds of promises. We're not going to give you the promises. We want to tell you the truth of what's happening. So get ready. Get your Bibles. Get your word. I'm going to speak prophetically to your life. I'm going to teach. Get your Bibles. Get your pen. Don't run off. Today is going to be teaching the word. I want to start off where I left off. I'm talking about the rule and reign of Christ. The stable government of Christ Jesus. You know that Jesus is not only Lord and Savior and healer and deliverer, but he is also king. Now, he's not king of everybody, and he's not king of everywhere. Look at this world system. You can see Jesus is, I'm going to say a statement now. Watch this. Jesus is not Lord of this world yet. Samuel, God bless you. Karki, be back. God bless you. Chantel, God bless you. Maxwell, blessings all across the nations, Nepal, Bhutan, India, Indonesia, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Nassau, I see you, I see you, just say where you're from, Shalewa, God bless you, listen, listen, I'm getting excited here, the world system is uncertain. Typhus, God bless you, Typhus, calling. All right, let's get to this word. I'm, I'm going to jump ahead of myself. Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. And I'm going to call out if the Lord says something to you prophetically. I'll just speak it out and just tell you what the Lord is showing me to you. Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Shalewa brings a greetings to you and blessings to you <clears throat> this morning. Watch this. First of all, I want to introduce you to the king. Praise God. The king and his kingdom. Then I'm going to tell you about his government. Now I want to use something here. I want to use the word kingdom and king interchangeably. What do I mean? Instead of saying kingdom, I want you to think government. Because most people around the world don't understand kingdoms. We're going to talk about that. But most people understand governments. And so I want you to understand that Jesus has a government too. He's the leader of that government. He has his cabinet, he has his board, he has uh, his delegated representatives in the earth, hallelujah. He has his laws, and if you abide by the law of Jesus' government, and you're a good citizen, he said he'll take care of you. How do I know? I'll show you that in a little bit. Praise God. Now I saw Bahamas representing, God bless you. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says, now watch this. For unto us a child is born. You know this. We shed this every Christmas. And to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Consular, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. All right. Let's break that down. And the prophet Isaiah saw that there was going to come a time where this child was going to be born. You know who that child is. If you don't know, that was Jesus. 2,000 years ago, a child was born and a son was given. Now, that's, we'll teach on that another time. A baby was born, but he was also the son of God. He was given to the earth. Why? He couldn't be born at that time too because the son was given. He is son in all of eternity. I'll get to that later. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. You hear that? Upon the shoulder of Jesus is his government. And every person and government of the world that wants to come upon the shoulder of Jesus, he's going to bear them. Praise God. I'm so glad I'm on the shoulder of Jesus. Are you there? If you're on the shoulder of Jesus, type it in there and say, I'm on the shoulder of Jesus. 
Because if you're on the shoulder of Jesus, he has broad shoulders. He can carry my, listen, I don't have any burdens. I don't have any fear. Yeah, the devil tried to bring it from time to time. Praise God. But I remind that devil, I don't have any burdens. I don't have any fears. I don't have any doubt. I'm not worried about my life or my family's life. I'm not worried about money, finances. I've been set free many years ago because I've learned to cast my burdens my fears and my thoughts upon Jesus. I put it upon his shoulder. Because if he can carry government, he can surely take care of your needs and mine. Praise the Lord. Oh, this is good. The government shall be... Now, I'm not going to shout and holler at you because I want you to get this. Uh, the government shall be upon his shoulder. I want to let you know I haven't met a leader of a political party or a government leader who can take the whole nation upon their shoulder. In fact, when they get tired, they throw in the towel. Most government leaders, you know, they can't even manage their own portfolio. Why? The weight of a department, the weight of a ministry, the weight of a department of health, a ministry of health, a ministry of education is so overwhelming. West End, God bless you. It would crush the individual. Just human beings. We get angry and upset at leaders of political parties. You know, we worship them. I see it every year. I'm a young man and I just laugh every year during this political season, especially in our nation, where people are, you know, just overwhelmed with worshiping man. And I look at them every single election period and say, these same people who they worship are going to duck them when they get into power. These same people who they idolize are going to forget them after they finish campaigning them. These same people are going to forget the promises that they've made. Is that a hard message? Yes, but you got to face the reality. These people are humans. They cannot take all of your burdens on their own. They cannot take your house of representative, cannot take all of his sin and his problems of his own life and his family and his own extended personal battles and take every person else with him. God, we get upset because we put more emphasis and trust in man than we put on the shoulder of Jesus the King. Well, I've grown that long time. That's why the Bible said pray for your leaders. I pray for them. I go to the polling station and I vote based on who has the best character in my constituency, whose political belief, praise God, uh, is closest to my spiritual and kingdom belief system. I don't vote for money. I don't vote because you're my friend. I don't vote for you because you're my community. I know you and your family. I don't vote for a political party because, you know, that's the, my father's family and, 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 and family's political party or my uncle or my cousin. I vote based on kingdom. I go to vote and put a vote next to a mom based on the person who carries the greatest spiritual philosophy that is closest to the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Now whether their party wins or not, that's not my business. I know between me and the Lord, I voted for the right person who's not going to introduce laws and policies that are going to violate God's kingdom. Not those who are going to promote abortion. I don't vote for abortionists. That's the problem now. We talk Christianity and we don't talk kingdom and government. We talk about Christian uh, philosophies on Sunday, but Monday to Saturday, there are demonic leaders who are taking nations down to hell. Everyone in the world talks Christianity, but guess what? They, both people who are going to promote a, 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 a perverted homosexual or lesbian lifestyle, they vote people who are going to invoke laws to oppress people. They vote for political leaders who, whose values and lifestyle doesn't live up to Christ, the kingdom and biblical laws of God. Is this a hard one? Yes! Because I'm going to show you that, you know, anyone can say they're Christian. Praise the Lord. God is God all the time. 
But there's another level. And that level is walking in the true laws of God in your life. Monday to Sunday. Is it hard? Yes, it's hard. It takes work. Yes, it takes work. But after I sought the kingdom of God, or Jesus said, seek ye first the government of God. You better share this because I'm telling you, I, the Lord has showed me some things prophetically that if this nation and other nations do not bring this country under the law and the authority of righteous leadership and kingdom people who are going to push righteousness in the nation, who is going to push righteous laws, who are going to pass righteous legislation, who are not going to milk and abuse and abort the lives of people, I'm sorry for the country. In amount, no amount of prophecy is going to deliver you. Because God is not mocked. What a nation sows, it will reap. And we are reaping partly what we have sown as a nation and as a people. We are reaping the results of generations of people who talk, Jesus said, with their mouths they declare me, but their hearts are far from me. There are too many people whose mouths talk God, 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 but their mind and their lifestyle is a violation of the laws of God. Then we wonder why we're reaping what we're reaping. We wonder why the nations that we're in are experiencing what we're experiencing. We wonder why in the poverty and the death and the destruction and the fear is at, is at its optimus height. I'm not here to bash anyone. I'm just saying it's time to get it right. Come on, type in the message. It's time to get it right. And we're living in a time where faithfulness is all. The Bible says in the last days, men will become lovers of themselves rather than lovers of God. There will be betrayal. There will be a, a backstabbing. There will be undercutting. Why? This is the time. And you know who are doing it? People who profess Christianity. People who profess that they know the Lord Jesus Christ. They're backstabbing their brothers and sisters. They're fighting over political party. They're fighting over money and land and property. They're backstabbing each other. There are people who promise you everything and then when they get in power, they take the money and wealth for them and their families. And every year you are disappointed. That's in every country I've seen it. Every country we have traveled to around the world. Wake up, people. And my wife and I, we pray, and we said, what's going on? And the Lord said, there's a spirit of deception. See, the enemy during this time wants to come in. Am I saying don't vote? Yes, go there and vote by the righteousness of God. Go there, and even if you vote whoever you vote for, you trust the kingdom of Jesus Christ. You trust the Lord Jesus Christ. You trust him, and you believe in him to bring you through, and to guide you, and to lead you, and to protect you, because there's none that can protect you. Any prime minister can protect you in your house? Huh? You see the gunman is still shooting up? Huh? Huh? When you are on the sea, can the minister of health help you? When you are driving in your car, can the national security leader help you? When you're home and you're bad, you better trust the kingdom of God. I rather trust this kingdom than any man. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but I will trust in the name of the Lord. And I'm going to pray while I'm trusting him that he puts some righteous leaders in position. We're going to bring righteous laws. As the Bible says, when the righteous are in power, the people rejoice. So if you're crying, it means righteousness is not in place. For well, unto us, Isaiah 9, let me get back into the word. For well, unto us, the, a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. This is Jesus. You know Jesus is still wonderful. He's a wonderful leader. Counselor. He has, he, you know what the Bible says? The spirit of counsel 
is upon Jesus, the spirit of might. Ah, uh, Shalei will talk about this some years ago. We studied this, the seven spirits of God, the spirit of might, counsel. All these things are upon Jesus Christ. He is the spirit of the spirit of counsel. That means uh, he has divine wisdom upon his life. Mighty God. Anyone who doubts that Jesus Christ is Lord, this is to destroy that. He is God in the flesh. Everlasting Father. He's everlasting. But he's not some political leader also. He is king, but he's also father. What a mighty position Jesus is in in our life. I don't know why people don't serve it. It just don't make sense. It doesn't make sense to trust in your own ability. To trust in your own intellect. To trust in your degrees. Yeah, your degrees can't help you. No degree can help anyone. The rich, the poor, the black, the white, the Indian, the Chinese, the Asian, the Oriental are dying regardless of their position. Every day I turn on the TV, international news, or local news, or local social media platforms, the rich and the poor are dying equally. Those with doctorate degree and the man who's selling, uh, you know, items on the street corner. There's nothing that can save anybody more than any other place. First world countries, Europe, Canada, America, that has uh, 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 Australia, that has advanced medical facilities. People are dying by the thousands, sadly. So running to Canada won't help you. Running to London, England, Deepak won't help you. Running to Australia is not going to help you. Running to Johannesburg or Frankfurt, Germany is not going to save you. Running to Paris is not going to save you. Running to Austria, running to uh, Singapore, Japan. None of these places are safe anymore. The world has changed. The world has changed. The world has changed. But Jesus, he is everlasting father. He is the prince of peace. Oh, how we need peace now. What am I talking about? The rule and reign of prayer. Oh, how we need peace. Let me move on. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 7. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. Well, this is not only talking about in the future, but this is also talking about now. Of the increase of this government. Let me tell you something. I don't care how the devil doesn't like it. I don't care how people burn down churches in northern uh, India. I don't care how they are uh, beheading Christians in the Middle East. I don't care how they are abducted and burning Christians in northern Nigeria. I don't care how they are persecuting Christians in the western society. I don't care what they are doing. The increase of the kingdom of God shall never end. You cannot stop the kingdom of God. There's no political party that can stop the kingdom of God. There's no government that can push out the kingdom of God. I don't care how they legislate laws to shut down the church and shut down the work of God and try to stop up the church. You will never stop the increase of God's kingdom. Praise God. Whoa, hallelujah. If you burn Christians to the stake, I'm telling you, the devil and governmental systems tried to do it for the last 2,000 years. They burned the apostles to the stake. They cut them in half. They beheaded them. They threw them in boiling hot oil. They threw them in boiling uh, uh, hot water. They scalded them. They fed them to the lions. They burnt them to the stake and put them in Rome. Hallelujah. The martyred saints were put up. Uh, or in the, on the street corners as burning light flames. Hallelujah. They tried everything to do. Even today, they are killing, they are beheading the Taliban, the ISIS, or these extremist groups. Uh, yes, I said it. And many other Satanists, they are attacking the church daily. Hallelujah. They are sending attacks, whether physical or spiritual attacks. That nasty devil with his army and his kingdom is trying to Kalash with the kingdom of Jesus Christ and the body of Christ and it is happening. Many of you, you are going through persecution, you are going through pain, you are going through anguish. It's that nasty Satan, that's that nasty demon 
That's that nasty devils. They are real. They exist. They have their own kingdom and their own government. And the leader of that kingdom and government is Satan. And he wants to destroy the kingdom of God. He wants to fight against Jesus the King. But he is going to lose. He is constantly losing. And he's going to continue to lose that old sloth. But Satan is going to lose. Ultimately, how do I know? The Bible said, and of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. There will never be an end to the rulership and the lordship of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's why if folk are not in Christ today, it's dumb. It's dangerous, in fact. Ah, if I wasn't saved, you know what I'd do right now? I'd get saved. Praise God. If I was lost today, you know what I'd do? Give my heart to Jesus. It's dumb to die. Hallelujah. I mean, if you're in the COVID ward, share this with somebody. You might live and you might die. But it's all right to die if you die in Christ. The dumb thing is to die without Christ. I mean, people are dying all around and people are still going to the club. People are dying by the millions around the world. I mean, if a major Dorian hurricane doesn't change people, if a glorious pandemic that is riddling the world doesn't cause people to wake up. Lay and I were talking about it this weekend. I mean, there are some people still with dirty, nasty attitudes. There are people still with bitter ways. There are some people who are still arrogant and prideful and they can't see that one virus could knock their body out and they'll have to face the king of glory and when we face him there he won't be a loving father he's going to be a righteous church who's going to judge you and i based on what we did here in this life and in this body don't let nobody fool you. I don't want a prophetic word about a car and a house and some money coming. I want a word that if I live, I lived in Christ. If I die, I die in Christ. That's the only hope I can tell you today. I mean, no change of government will change nothing. Change or no change of government. I don't know. I'm not prophesying but government. I, it don't make a difference to me. Because what God has for me, I'm going to apply these kingdom principles and I will get prosperous anywhere I go. If you apply the words of the kingdom of God that I'm sharing today, whether you go to Zimbabwe, whether you go to Mozambique, whether you go to Haiti, whether you go to Johannesburg, South Africa, whether you go in the jungles of the Amazon, of Guyana, of hallelujah, Venezuela, or Brazil, you will prosper if you apply the kingdom principles of the word of God in your life. If you don't, you will be poor wherever you go. You will be sick wherever you go. You will be tormented in your mind wherever you go. You will be empty and void of the presence of the Lord wherever you go. You will live a life that's only fulfilling to your sexual desire, your carnal nature, the nature of your own instincts, your own senses, your sensual desire. That's all you will fulfill. You'll live a life trying to please people and for people to please you. If that's what you want, go ahead. But hey, but if you get the message of this kingdom message, the Lordship of Jesus Christ, watch this. Isaiah 9, of the increase of his government, of the peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom. Huh? He has a kingdom to establish it. Jesus has already established his kingdom to thousand years ago why don't you become a part of it now the part oh, oh hallelujah man i'm trying to get to my notes the problem i've seen with many people by the thousands you know what the problem is people know this is true you hear the christmas story every christmas jesus was born and unto us a son was born a child was given but listen you know what's the hardest thing as I talk to young men and young women, old men and old women, there's some old people too who just said they, they, they don't want to surrender their lives to the full authority of Jesus Christ. You know, they want to go to church maybe but still smoke. They, 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 they want to, uh, you know, read one or two scriptures but, you know, they still want to drink their liquor. They like the little wine and cocktail. No, you, you, no, you can't come into the kingdom like that. No, when you come into the kingdom of Jesus Christ, it's all or nothing. How do I know? Jesus said, no man can serve two masters. Either you love one and hate the other, or you 
hate the other and love one. It's the only can choose. Choose you today who you will serve. Some people want the kingdom, but what do they want to do? They want to still have their sweetheart. They, they want to go to church and just partially commit to Christ. Well, church or not going to church is not going to save you only. You need a relationship with Jesus Christ 24 hours, 7 days a week. You know, Shalewa and I, we're, we, you know, we have a powerful teaching on the words of Jesus. Most people I know do not commit to what Jesus said. They like what some bishop said. They like what some prophet said. They like following some prophet on social media. They like following some prophetess on social media. They want to give their life and heart to a man or woman. That's the problem. Humans are so filled with idol worship. It's difficult for most people to say, I'm going to commit to following Jesus Christ by studying every word he says, by learning about his kingdom, by learning about his words, by honoring his word. And I want to spend, listen here, I since I fell in love with Jesus for real. Today and I, over the last few years, we started eating the words of Christ more than ever before. I'm telling you, we're fixed on it. We found out that is the secret. That's the key to life and eternal living. Ah, yes, we love apostles. We are apostles. We are prophets. We prophesy every day into the lives of people. We love it, and we will continue to do it. But I'm telling you, we lead people to Christ Jesus. We don't want them loving on us. We don't want them worshiping us. The problem is we have people who prophesy, who can teach who has a gift of healing or some miracle in their life, and they get people to worship them. They get people to idolize them. They get people to follow them all the days of their life. They become social media superstars. Now, if you're following us and the word is blessing your life, keep following the word. Give Jesus praise and, and, and pray for us. Tell us you're being blessed. You don't mind that. If you want to bless the ministry, go ahead. Bless the work of the ministry. But I will tell you right now, as an ordained apostle, uh, over 10 years, 12 years, my apostle Rodney Roberts had sent forth into the nations of the world. I tell you, I'm too afraid of Jesus and his kingdom for people to worship me. Hallelujah. I don't never want anybody to worship me. I'm a man just like you. I'm a human just like you. I'm a person just like you. And if I don't follow the laws of the kingdom, I will pay the penalty like everybody else. That's the secret. Hear ye, O nation. I'm saying the Lord has released. We hear this prophetic word. The Lord is removing the spiritual idolatry in the nation of Bahamas right now. Holly, I'm moving even oh God, Abashanda, not only in the Bahamas, but in nations around the world. Hallelujah. Even the kingdom apostolic leaders, I challenge them every time not to let people worship them, not to be idols in the lives of people. You're an apostle, you're a prophet, you're a pastor, you're a teacher. You are a servant in God's kingdom. You humble yourself, you exalt Jesus, and you lift up the people, not the other way around. We have the other way around. People, I, I, I let me tell you something. I, I'll say this boldly, and I have pastors who are watching <clears throat> on this platform, and we deal with pastors. I'm telling you, I don't like working too much with pastors. I tell my wife that all the time. I rather work with sinners. Why? Because some pastors have become so arrogant. They got so many people worshiping them. They become so arrogant and prideful. I'm telling you, there's some pastors who I know, man, they wouldn't call you, return your phone call. There's a pastor, they act like they're so busy. You know, my wife and I, we travel apostles. We're traveling. We write books. We have so many books and manuscripts. We, you know, we're president of so many different organizations. Kingdom Apostolic Ministries, Kingdom Apostolic Global Network, our own television network, Power and Glory TV. TV. I'm just giving all the blood glory. I mean, own a you know practicing medicine full time. I mean, God has us so busy doing so, running our family and, and advising leaders of of so many nations around the world. But yet, when people call, I take the time to answer it as best as I can right away. And if I don't, I apologize. But you have some of these guys who are bishops. They are so high and mighty. And every time I look at them, the Holy Spirit said they are full of pride. That's why I never take them to nations. So they and I in our ministry, we've gone into nations. 
you know, around the world. And we go there and say, Lord, how you do that? The Lord says, as long as you, this is what the Lord told me. Stay humble, son. Never take my glory. Never become an idol in my people's eyes. Always let them know it is, I am the Lord Jesus. Point them to me. The Bible said, if I be lifted up, Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw men to me. I keep pushing people to worship Jesus. I've seen great prophets of God who I was around. Their gift was so amazing, but they got full of pride and they're dead and gone now. Many pastors, they got so arrogant in their position as associate pastor or senior pastor. They don't have time to talk to people. They're competing. They're fighting against one another. You know, trying to act like they're better. Now the new thing is putting all kind of false uh, degrees out there now. I hate that. I'm a person who studied, and I hate when people put false degrees. They say they have some doctorate of this and that. It's false! How could you get a whole doctorate in, in a couple of weeks? No, 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 no. Why? It's a spirit of pride. They got to keep doing things to idolize themselves. Oh, I got a doctorate in ministry. I got to win. When did you study it? I don't like falsehood because I know how long it takes to get a doctorate degree. If you didn't get it, you don't have to compete and lie. It's full of lies on this social media. People are creating a false sense of impression to deceive and to delude the people. Can't you see that? Jesus is not being emphasized. False degrees. I have a doctorate in this degree. Where did you get that? And I check out the school and it's fake. I check out the university you say you got your doctorate from and it's fake. It's lies. Why? Why are you so broken, man or woman of God, that you have to lie on social media? And not some old casual person, your pastor, apostle, prophet, pastor, bishop, lying. I had one time, this bishop came to me, wanted to sell me doctorate degree and master's degree. I tell him the devil is a liar. I have a medical degree I worked hard for, the Lord gave me for. Huh? Ten plus years, and I can take my integrity and buy a false degree I didn't study and read for. I don't want it. I don't have to create some false doctorate degree to impress who? You? And then God looking at me as a failure? Why? Because he knows all lies. I will be living a life of deception. I will be living a life of falsehood. Now, if you get an honorary degree, anybody can give an honorary degree. Praise God. If someone see the work you've done and they want to bless you from an institution, praise God. Put doctorate honorary. Praise God. But I see some of these fake things. I saw a young man with his fake degree, doctorate degree. And he's deceiving people right in this country. He's deceiving people. And people are online, congratulations, wonderful. And I'm looking like, God, you mean these people really can't see that that degree is false? That university don't exist? I don't even have signatories on the thing. You mark out the name. There's so much deception in this hour that people are trying to do things. That's why they want the worship of humans. That's why I'm saying it. It's all for the worship of themselves. They want to take the place of Jesus. They want worship. It's just like Satan. Satan has his kingdom. You know what got Satan kicked out of heaven? Satan got kicked out of heaven because he wanted worship. He wanted to replace the worship. He said, I will lift up my kingdom above the government of Jesus Christ. I will set my throne and my government far above the government of Jesus Christ. And the minute he did that and convinced one third of the other angels, see people who are against the kingdom of Jesus Christ, always wants worship, wants praise, wants worship of humans. Watch out for people who like that. Watch out for ministers who always need people's praise and worship and affirmation and adoration. I don't need that. You love me or don't love me. You, you, you share this or don't share it. I'm doing my assignment. I'm lifting up the name of Jesus. Now I want you to share it, yeah, because somebody will be blessed, saved, changed, delivered, and set free. But not because I need your money. Praise God. The 
that God has blessed me. Not that I need your praise and adoration because I come in the name of Jesus and I come to lift him up only. Not because I want you to follow my ministry and what we're doing. No, I want you to get to know Jesus for yourself. Follow his kingdom, learn his words, trust in him so that you can be blessed and one day you'll be sharing the word to the nations. That's what I want. I don't want you to be all slaves to me. Uh, I don't need you to be my adjutant. I don't need an adjutant. Praise God. I can lift my own bike. I can drive my own car. Now if you want to help me, praise God. But if I don't have it, I know how to jump in my car. We got too much idol worship in this nation. That is in every nation. I went to Asia. It's the same thing in India now. They're making these bishops idols. And all the pastors there now want people to worship them, bless them, give them money, give them food, give them glory, give them honor. Come on, please. It's one thing to honor. I honor you by saying I love you, I respect the office you're in. To give you glory is the one to constantly give you praise and affirmation and my whole life is depending on you. That's the difference and that's dangerous. That's the occult that's filling South Africa now. That's the occult that's invading Asia, Southeast Asia. That's the occult that's invading the Western world. And that's why this kingdom message is so important. Daniel chapter 11, let's move on quickly. Are you with me? Shout hallelujah. I know this is a hard message today. I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy. We're talking about the kingdom of God. Come on. Come out of human worship. That's it, Veronica. Come out of human worship. Come out of worshiping of man. Do we need to respect pastors? Yes. I respect pastors. I have a lot of pastors who are patient. I respect them. God bless you. Good day. They don't own me. I sat under a pastor and I thank him. Knock us through the apostle. I see the apostles and prophets do some of the dumbest things. Hallelujah. You wouldn't believe it, right? They make you feel like they are, you know, everything, but they're just humans. Amen. They're just humans just like you and I. Hallelujah. Prophets are just humans like you and I. I see some people prophesy and, you know, your white book. Then they leave out there and live a homosexual lifestyle. Why? Because the gift of God is on their life. And, 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 you know, they have battles and struggles too. I see the evangelists go and preach and people get saved and they come to know Jesus Christ. And they go and they go to find prostitutes or smoke cigarettes or go to drunkenness or go to adulterous lifestyle, a homosexual lifestyle. Why? Because everyone worships their gift. But no one work, uh, helps them to get out of their dark deepness of sin. I've seen Sam and Shalewa and I, we are praying for people who sing. I mean, and they were living all kind of adulterous, fornicated lifestyle. And they go to big name ministries. And they come to us and we minister to them. And they get saved and they get delivered. And they get married, young people. And they get transformed. And now they're in frontline ministry. Too many to call. If I say the name, you wouldn't believe it. But while they were under their big shot pastors and bishops, Big ministries, they weren't concerned about them. They only concerned about, they picking up their ministry. Mm -hmm. They're not concerned about the people that were lost. The people worshiping on the praise team. You know how many churches I've gone to and, and, and had revival or preaching. I call an altar call and all of the musicians come off the stand. The praise and worship people who just led us into the presence of the Lord comes on the altar and give their heart to Jesus Christ. Pastors even come down. Elders. I mean, the, the pastor was so ashamed. And I, I was ashamed too because I'm wondering, how could a ministry, what are they teaching that half, more than half the church came to the altar to give their heart to the Lord? And a pastor right there with a church and a ministry, big name ministry, and half of the people lost and on their way to hell. And the evangelist has to come in from outside. Praise be to the name of Jesus. Why? Because the kingdom is not being taught. Anyone who comes to our ministry, the first thing you got to do is, I got to make sure you save and know the Lord Jesus Christ. The first thing you do, not some new converts class, when you get to church, 
the first thing you do when you're on this platform, the first thing I check and teach you is the foundation of how to be saved fully in Christ Jesus and to be assured of your salvation. You can't be in the church 20 years and don't know if you will die today if you will make it into heaven. What kind of nonsense is that? How could you be going to a church for 15 years? Taking your family there and your husband ain't saved. Your children, you don't know if they saved. Some of you parents, you're going to pay severely. You know why? You know why? If you got everything about the word, praise God, praise God. The first thing I make sure I am is saved. My wife saved, my son saved, my children. My household. How could I be a pastor and a bishop and my own household ain't saved? My own children ain't saved. I saw a bishop's daughter with all her nakedness out the other day. I couldn't believe it. I showed it to my wife. I couldn't believe it on social media. How could you? No, 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 no. Because they're being idolized. They're being worshipped. And they love that worship. And while they're loving the worship of Jesus, Satan is coming in and destroying their family. Satan loves when you get worship and praise and you take it away from Jesus who really deserves it and you put it on you. Now the devil could come in and destroy you because that's the same thing that God had kicked out of heaven and he knows before the fall it is pride. Before you fall, pride will enter your heart. When you think you're safe and secured, then comes the adversary. Daniel chapter 11 Verses 32, the Bible said, The people that know their God shall be strong and shall do great exploits. What are we talking about? The rule and reign of Jesus. If you don't know Christ, the Bible said, uh, The people that do know Jesus are going to be strong. I keep wondering why Christians are keep backsliding. I wonder why people who I grew up with in the church now, when I see them, one guy, we used to minister together on the college campus and do outreach now. When I left to go off to school, he was promoting, drinking, and partying, the biggest parties. That was him. The same guy who we did skits and plays and went from church to church. A few years later, now today, he's one of the most popular ones promoting parties and drinking and, and festivals. And he's joined all of these associations and organizations. These societies, and that's what he's promoting, the kingdom of darkness. Someone who were, we were together as young men with a group of other young people on the college campus. Now he's backslidden, not only backslidden and living a sinful life personally, but he's now pushing an agenda of Satan to the forefront and leaving souls to hell. Very young men and young women. Who I was in high school and college with who loved the Lord. Now they, they are on the forefront of pushing the satanic agenda, not the sinners, not the people who were back then sinners. The people who back then were sinners are now saved. And the people back then who were saved are now sinners. There's only a few people that are walking the straight and narrow. Uh, and today, if you stand up for Christ, they call you radical, but the devil can go to hell. The Bible said, Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus said, this is the greatest commandment, that you would love the Lord thy God, your king, your lord, your ruler. The word lord means owner, that you would love Adonai. The word Adonai means owner, that you would love your lord, your God. With all your heart, your soul, your mind, your body and strength. That's the problem. If you're not going to come all the way, Jesus don't want it. He don't want lukewarm. He don't want cold. If you're going to be cold, go and sit. If I'm, gonna, if I'm not going to be on fire, I'm going to be cold. And if I'm cold, praise God. If I'm cold, I'm going to drink liquor. I'm going to smoke dope. I'm going to have all the women I want. I'm going to go to every party. If I'm going to be in the world, I'm going to smoke all the cigars. I'm going to smoke all the cigarettes. I'm going to do it. I'm going to travel the world. And I'm going to involve myself in every religious occult. I'm going to enjoy the power of Satan. If I'm going to be cold. Jesus said, don't be cold. Be hot or cold. If you're going to be lukewarm, Jesus, I can spit you out of my mouth. 
It's, a, it's, it's an example Jesus did. Don't be lukewarm. There are too many people who want to be hot for Jesus, but yet they still want to be in the world. And they're in the middle, and Jesus said, I hate the middle. Commit to one Lord. Commit to one king. Commit to one government. There's no middle ground. Come on, help me somebody. There's some people I've spoken to. I'm talking about the kingdom of God. I talk about coming into the government of God. I'm talking about it. What am I saying? There are some people I know that they, they, they just they, they just don't want to come all the way into Christ. They, no, they don't want to come all the way in. Huh? They're tied into the world system. They're tied into politics. And because they have someone in politics, they can't preach the gospel. They can't live right. There's some pastors who are on the payroll of political leaders. You're going to see it come out over the next few weeks. Nothing about sin they can talk about because they're on government payroll. There's some prophets who are on government payroll. Uh, there's some evangelists on government payroll. They can't talk about sin. They can't talk about the righteousness of God's kingdom. Why? Because they're on some board. They're on some committee. They're on some, uh, uh, some politically appointed position. And don't they know they've sold out the kingdom of God just to be on a political appointed position? Because now they can't talk about certain matters of death and crime and poverty and incest and immorality in the land. That's in every country. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, your mind, and your strength. I've tied a bunch of sissy, passive Christians. Now, you don't have to be radical like me. I'm radical because Jesus brought me through some stuff you will never know. I've committed my life and family to him from now until he comes or he calls me home. So you don't have to be like me, but be on fire wherever you are. Come all the way in wherever you are. You might not have to preach like me, but you should have some fire. You should have some passion about what you're doing. Huh? When you are passionate for Christ, they call it radical and crazy. But when they go to their basketball games, they shout and scream. When they go to their whole house, they shout and scream. When they go to their strip club, they shout and scream. When they go to their uh, 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 concert and they worship in man. And sports stars, they worship what they call them, sports stars. But to the maker, to the creator. We, we must think God is some genie or joker, you know. How do you think he feels as king and lord? That when you're sick, you want him to heal you. When you're in trouble, you want him to deliver you. When you're in crisis, you need his help. But yet you wouldn't open your mouth and praise him and talk about him. You are ashamed of him before men. But yet you go to a basketball game and you shout. You shout for your Olympic team winner. I seen, yes, I was proud to see uh, the Olympians run and bring gold to the country. But I watch how people worship human beings. But when they want to come to serve the Lord, they look at you funny when you radical and you talk about Christ Jesus. And yet when Corona hit their body, they will cry out to Jesus there. When they lay up on that hospital bed, they will cry out to Jesus there. That's a good time. When their son or daughter is lying on the deathbed of affliction, they will cry out there. When their child or their children gets in problem with the law and they go before the court, they will cry out there. When the child is in jail, they want mercy on them there. When the bank collectors are coming to take the house away, they can call and find Jesus then. When they had a head-on collision and saw their life flash before them, then they will call on the Lord. That's fine. That's good. It's a good time. But I wish you called upon him before then. Let's move on. We're talking about the government of God. Let me give you a few scriptures and we're going to be done. And I'm going to be ready, getting ready to pray for some of you. Getting ready to pray. Revelation. Is this a hard word? Yes, because I love you. I don't have no other word. Every week goes by. I don't know who we're going to see next week. Every time I think about walking away from God, I remember it's too late now. We're in a global crisis. The coming of the Lord Jesus could be any day now. Well, Pastor, we heard that before. The hell with the devil. I said the coming of Jesus could come any day. 
you know, I stopped going on family group chats and talking. The Lord told me, cut it out. I stopped it for the last couple of months. Why? He said, son, don't waste your time talking to people who are reject the word. There are some people right now, they rejected the word so much that God has given them over to a reprobate mind. You know what I mean? The Lord has released them. They are in a state where they're blind. As I drive around, there are so many people blind. And I said, Lord, why are they blind and confused and don't know what to do? The Lord said, every time I said my word, they laughed at it. They mocked it. They scorned it. They scorned the messenger. They scorned the word. They scorned the teaching. And now I've given them over. You know what now? The only thing they're talking about is money. And they're talking about gambling. They're talking about politics. Why? They are afraid and they are empty because they know they are lost. Hear me today. Don't be lost in this hour. The Bible said, Jesus said, my spirit will not always strive with man. Hear me, this is a prophetic word today. Share this. The Lord said, my spirit will not always strive with man. There's a closing of the door. Well, why are you prophesying like that? Well, this is how God called me to prophesy. I'm not a house and a car and a bless you prophet. I'm an end times prophetic voice. Hallelujah. Shalev and I and our ministry and our leaders around the world, we talk about the coming of Jesus. We talk about repentance. We're talking about the reality of what's happening. I'm not here to hype you up. If you want to be hyped up, go on another page. I'm here to tell you, get it right quickly because the time is winding down quickly. The coming of the Lord is winding down quickly. The fulfillment of the prophecies of this book is coming quickly. The shaking of the earth and the world system is happening quickly. The disappointment of nations are happening quickly. The arising of, I don't care what they say, the arising of the Antichrist spirit. The Bible says the spirit of the Antichrist is already here. The coming of the Lord and the closing of the ages, I don't care what you think, it could be one day, it could be one year, it could be 10 years, it could be 50 years from now. It doesn't matter, it is coming and the fulfillment of it is happening quickly. Jesus will get the glory. Jesus will get the final victory. The saints, the believers who trusted in him, even unto the end, the Bible said, he that endured to the end shall be saved. This is an enduring of the end. You cannot give up at the beginning. You cannot give up in the middle. You cannot give up, give up close to the finish line. You have to go all the way through the end with this message. Revelation 11 and 15, watch this. Then the seven angel blew his trumpet. There was loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Let me tell you something. This old, all the governments of the world are going to fail, you know. As the U.S. pull out of Afghanistan, Afghanistan is crumbling. Why? The kingdoms of the world. Now the Taliban is taking over. This is national news. Afghanistan crisis. What am I saying? Every world system and it's projected the U.S. government has put in over one trillion dollars worth of money and resources into Afghanistan. And in less than a month of pulling out the troops from there, the whole country has collapsed. All that money, all that training, all those weapons. One trillion dollars spent from the federal government. What am I saying? The kingdoms of this world. Look at your country. Look at your nation. Is it all doom and gloom? No. I'm excited. Why? Because Jesus kingdom is going to override all of this. Starting now. <laughs> Praise God. I'm not talking about some kingdom to come. In the future, I talk about right now, the kingdom of Jesus, the government of Jesus is moving. How do I know? I'm going to tell you right now. Luke 17 and 21. 
Luke 17, 21. Verse 20, Luke 17, verse 20. What am I saying? Praise God. I'm telling you right now, not some kingdom to come later on down. See, that's how I used to think. I used to live life defeated all my life, thinking, oh, when we get to heaven, somewhere down in the future, it's going to get better. No, right now, right now, Jesus, when he came to preach, he said, repent in Matthew chapter 3 and Matthew chapter 6. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. So from 2,000 years ago, Jesus came and brought a stable government. And up to the day, his government still is existing. And it's still growing. Isaiah said, his government, there will be no decrease to it. And, the, and his government will endure, Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. Daniel 11 talks about this. Revelation 11, 50, we just read it, says that, you know, the kingdoms of this world, ultimately, the prophetic word. You want a prophetic word today? Here it comes. The kingdom of Jesus is going to win. Praise God. The kingdom of Jesus is going to outlast every earthly system. Then you see it? Hitler's system fall. Communism is going to fall. Democracy is going to fail. Independent governments are going to fall. Sharia, law, government, nations are going to fall. Hindu nations are going to fall. Every nation of the earth, their kingdom, their system, their government, their operation that they've set up is going to crumble and Jesus' kingdom is going to emerge. I'm going to come forth with great authority and power now and it's going to extend forever. Why? Because his kingdom is everlasting. It never began and it will never end. It is existing now. Praise God. Luke 17. 20. I want to show you this. Don't take my word for it. Luke 17 and 20. Being asked by the Pharisees, Jesus was asked by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God would come. Just like many of you and I, the Pharisees, during the time Jesus lived and walked in the earth as a physical man, they asked him, when is your government coming? Are we going to have to elect you as government? Are we going to put your government in power? Are we going to make you king or leader? And you're going to rule the country and then rule the world? That's what Israel was hoping for. They knew that the word Messiah, they were looking for a Messiah. And the word Messiah means king. Consecrated, set apart, anointed king. That's what the word Christ means, anointed king. That's where the word Messiah means, anointed king. So the Jews and Israel and all the world at that time was looking for Israel's king. They were looking for Israel to have a king and a government and a cabinet and, a, you know, a leadership that was going to take over Israel and the rest of the world forever. And Israel was going to be the dominant nation in the earth. So this is what the Pharisees are asking. This is what those teachers are asking. They're asking Jesus. So I set that up for you. They ask Jesus, when is this government you've been talking about? Everywhere you go, Jesus was saying, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. He starts off, the kingdom of heaven is like this. The kingdom of God is like this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And when you pray, hallelujah, pray, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. So Jesus was just talking kingdom, 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 kingdom. Or government, 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 my government, my government, my government. The laws of my government are like this. The laws of my government are like that. My government is established like this. I'm going to stand up. He was almost like he's campaigning. Praise God. Jesus was campaigning his government. But the only difference is, when he talked about his government, he was healing sick bodies. Come on, somebody. He was opening blind eyes. He was opening deaf ears. He was causing limbs to grow back. So he was not only talking about a government, he was demonstrating that his power of his government was real. His government has power to heal sick bodies. Oh, that's for somebody right now. If you have corona, if you have AIDS, if you have cancer, whatever your disease is, if you have a backache, a back problem, a leg issue, whatever it is, Jesus 
healed every manner of sickness and disease, demonstrating that his government has power over sickness. And they brought to him those who were tormented and had mental diseases and who were oppressed and depressed and suppressed by demon spirits. And he healed all of them night after night. He campaigned on a real promise that I'm going to heal body. And then he fed the 5,000. He showed his government will take care of the sick, the oppressed. He took little children, the youth, and he said, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such they are of the kingdom. These young people are of the kingdom. These children shall rise up and be great in my kingdom. He went about calming the storm, showing his government's power over the winds and the waves and the water. He went out, praise God, and he spoke in the temples and he taught the leaders how to demonstrate the kingdom of God. He taught Nicodemus that you must be born again to even experience the kingdom. Hallelujah. If you're not born again, this will not make sense to you. I stop arguing with sin. They cannot understand the things of the kingdom. They do not understand the cross of Jesus. They don't understand the blood of Jesus. They don't understand prophecy. They don't understand praying in tongues. They don't understand prayer. They don't understand uh, uh, worship of the Lord. They don't understand hell. They don't understand heaven. They don't understand spiritual warfare. They are ignorant. And if you waste time arguing with them, they will never get it. Because you must be born again. You must be born of the Spirit. You must be born of the blood. You must be born of the water. You must be washed with the Word of God. You must accept what Jesus did on the cross to even come into this kingdom to operate. And then when you get into this kingdom, there are laws and principles found in this Bible called the book called the Bible. These are filled with laws of the kingdom. And if you follow those, you will be blessed. You don't need a prophet to be blessed. You don't need a pastor alone to be blessed. God will use people in those offices to help you if you are seeking him first. If you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all other things shall be added unto you. What did Matthew 6 and 33 say? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything you need shall be added unto you. My God, you can go home on that. Shalewa and I and our family, we just seek the kingdom. We just seek the kingdom and everything we need is added unto us. It's that simple. I mean, I don't have to come and fake anything. I don't have to cause any smoke and music to play and loud thing to get you excited. No, just seek the kingdom. You need money? Seek the kingdom. Seek the government of God. Seek Jesus as the king of this government. How do you seek him? Seek his word. Spend time with him. Talk to him. Get to know him. Grow in him. Learn his laws and principles. Learn his way of doing things to get what you need to get in your life. What do I mean? If he said you want to be, you want friends, show yourself friendly. Forgive your enemies. Do good to those who despise you. Ah, pray for those who abuse you. Forgive your brother seventy times seven. These are the laws of the principles. Give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, overflow it shall men give to your bosom. These are the words of God's kingdom. That if you apply them, they work. You don't need to wait on some government uh, handouts. My wife told me somebody she know got some government coupons. I said, babe. Oh, they do. I'm past that 20 years ago. I've been trusting the kingdom of God over 20 years. And let me tell you, I don't need no $20 government coupon. Praise God. I'm bigger than that. Is that arrogant? No, I'm just, I'm just bigger than that. I'm far past that. I don't need to kiss up to some member parliament to get some $100 in, in, in my campaign bag. Come on, people. How long are we going to live at these low levels? Come on, pastors. You who are on this page who are pastors, uh, how long are you going to just be uh, a receiver? I've become a giver. Our ministry has become a giver. We've been giving. We've been giving. Why? Praise be to God. We, we are called. It's more blessed to give than to receive. See, that's a kingdom principle. I'm a kingdom man. I really take. Hallelujah. We went somewhere the other day. Praise God. And I told you, uh, woman of God, God bless you, Bandera. God bless you. Listen, I went somewhere yesterday. We sat down, and uh, I just asked the lady, praise God, 
Where did she buy the drink from? She told me where she got the drink from. We had a family time, and uh, she said, uh, uh, it's expensive. I said, no problem. And her mother next to her opened up a container and said, you want some water? I said, yes, thank you. She opened up and, and gave it. I said, the Lord said, take it. Why? Because we are received. We don't, we, we just receive. I received it on her behalf. I said, Lord, bless her. Because she, she don't even know. When you give it to a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. I'm telling you, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everywhere we've got yesterday, the same thing. We were driving. We stopped the gas station. There was a, a pastor there. And by the prophetic anointing, I said, praise God, pastor. And I spoke to him. And he was shocked that I knew who he was. And when I prophesied to him, he said, man of God, I'm going to have you over to dinner. My wife and I, praise God. I'm telling you, praise God. I did see just favor, 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 favor. See why? Because we get up in the morning and we have our devotion and we put on the words of Jesus or we read the words of Jesus and we meditate on the scripture for about a half hour or an hour. We just suck in the word of God. We get that word in our spirit and then we take out, uh, you know, we worship and we pray. Hallelujah. And you know what God has told us to do? I will share with you. We start building up our faith in the word. We start worshiping. We start praying. Then we get the Lord's table. And we take the Holy Communion. Some of you, 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 yes, sir. What some people have been asking me, what do you do to stay healthy? Yes, people are dying all around. We are on the forefront. You know what the Lord told me to do? Anoint myself with oil. So I anoint myself with oil. I cover myself and family with the blood of Jesus. I take the Lord's table. The Bible said, and as often as you take the, I know it sounds crazy, but in as often as you take the Lord's table, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. When you take that body and the blood, the Bible said we overcome the wicked one, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb. When you take that um, juice of the Lord's table, don't you know you're taking the blood of Jesus? And when I take that, I said, Lord, let it go into my body and cleanse me. Let it heal me. You better take the Lord's table. Hallelujah. You better take the Lord's body and blood. I don't care if it's cracker or bread or whatever juice. You take it and get healing in your body. Praise God. Yeah, I wear the mask. I sanitize and I social distance too. Praise God. And I take some immune boosters and some other things. But I get in the word. Praise God. And the Bible said, when you sow to the poor, you lend to God, and he will deliver you in your time of affliction. So Shalewa and I, we know how to sow for our healing. Praise God. We start sowing into uh, the work of God. We start seeking the kingdom. You know why we're staying healthy, I believe? I believe because we're seeking the kingdom. And he said, if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all other things shall be added unto you. And they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Some of you, if you want to live, you better start telling people about Jesus. Praise God. You know why? Because as you tell people about Christ Jesus, he'll keep you alive. Praise God. Ah, you better get on the phone and tell somebody about the goodness of God. You better get online and tell somebody about Jesus. Hallelujah. I keep giving God, I keep giving the Lord Jesus uh, opportunity to keep me alive. Praise God. Because he's not going to take anybody out who's being useful for him. Just doesn't make sense. Hallelujah. When you are useful for the Lord, then he will keep you alive. Because you have purpose. You have a life. You have destiny. Praise the Lord. The government. These governments are crumbling. Well, watch what Jesus said. Luke 17. We're still on there. My God, I want to. If you give me a few more minutes, I'm going to read some scriptures quickly into your spirit. Then I'm going to pray. Let me move quickly. Matthew 17 and 20. Matthew 17 verse 20. Being asked by the Pharisees, I said this up already, when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them, the kingdom, let me change, interchange kingdom with government. Being asked by the Pharisees, when will your government come? When are you going to take your government and establish it? What a good word for this political season we're in. He answered, my government is not coming in ways that you think you can observe. The kingdom of God is not coming in ways that you can observe. No, when you say, look here or look there, for behold, this government that is coming is going to be in you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Uh, uh, you know, that's the danger. This is a powerful scripture. Jesus said, my government is not coming with outside campaigning. That's why when I see people pushing themselves on social media with flyers and ads and promoting themselves, I have a big concern because why? The kingdom is not going to advance like that. I don't have to go and put up, you know, placards on the main highway or running all down the street and buy all these expensive hat and shirt and flags. No, the kingdom doesn't work like that. Jesus' government doesn't have to be promoted like that. His government, when you are born again, comes on the inside. The king comes on the inside. And it's a dangerous thing because many people look on, at you and I on the outside and don't recognize who's on the inside. Praise God. Some of you are looking outside for external governments, external bosses, external organizations, external companies, external um, 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 resources of money and favor and, 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 and promotion from outside. Because you don't know who you are. Me, I pull from what's on the inside out. So when I began to do that, all of a sudden, from the inside, I started pulling out books. I started pulling out tapes. I started pulling out teachings. I started pulling out songs. I started pulling out writings. I started pulling out creative ideas. I started pulling out business uh, and resources uh, and resourcefulness. I started pulling out creativity from where? The kingdom inside. When I started doing that, doors started opening up from nation to nation to nation to nation to place. Everywhere I go, I stop. And I pray in the Holy Ghost. And I ask the king that's in me. And all of his resources of the kingdom. To now lead me king. How do I find this resource? And all of a sudden. Instantly. Because I trust his kingdom. I don't need to wait for a week for prayer. Some of you need all kind of prophets to tell you things. Hallelujah. What, what, do we, what if there's no prophet in your area? You're going to die? You better know how to pull on a word from the inside. What if you're sick? You need the water from the inside. What if you can't reach no bishop, no prophet, no apostle for no help? You better know how to pull on the kingdom and the king that's in you and pull on the resources of the government and the law, thy word have I hid in my heart. I hide this word in me. Every day I tank it up. You might need it, but one day when that sickness pulls your body and you don't have the strength to pray, you can pull out on that word that's in you. One minute when a car is about to strike head on collision, you can pull on Eva Sata, Lord Jesus. You can pull on the word and that car will sway out of your way. You can pull on the word, that gunman, Urabashita, Rebekerabashanda. You can just pull on the word. The angels of heaven, your government's assistant. Do you know our government, the kingdom of God, has 24 7 protection. Some of you, you call the police, they'll never get to your house. And I love the police force and I love wherever you are talking about. Not only this country, everywhere in the world. Everywhere in the world. Everywhere in the world. Everywhere. You call for help, it will take some time. But you better have the Holy Ghost. You better have the angels of the Lord. You better have them around you. Shut that in this year. That you send them out. Lord Jesus, I am going to pray this prayer for some of you. Pray it with me. Lord, I am an heir of the kingdom. And I need 24-7 protection for me and my family. I, 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 don't, I don't care who don't want it. That's your business. If you want Corona to strike you in the house, that's your business. I'm putting my angels to work. <clears throat> I'm putting my angels on assignment. I'm putting my angels to protect me. I'm putting my angels to guide my home and my dwelling. I'm putting my angels to work. I'm sending them forward to protect. I'm sending them forward to bring miracles. I'm sending them forward to bring favor. I, they are real. I've, I've encountered angelic visitation many, 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 many times. Many times. In our ministry and in our lives. Too many that recall. Many in deliverance. Especially in deliverance as we pray. Shalei will tell you. In deliverance we, 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 we call upon the angels of the Lord. To do warfare. 
and to assist us in warfare and deliverance and they come and we see them manifest we see them hold out demonically possessed people I've seen stuff with Shalewa and our ministry with angelic powers ain't nobody in this world could never tell me the power of God's Jesus' kingdom is not real that angels are not real I've seen them in operation have I seen them physically with my own eyes? No, I haven't seen them physically, but I've seen them move. I've seen them hold down demonized, possessed people at the word of the Lord. They pin down people who are demonically possessed. I see them drove out demonic spirits to the abyss. I see them. Hallelujah. Brother Kirk. So they were uh, Nathaniel Carey, Kirkland Wright, uh, Beryl. Hallelujah. Uh, all these people. Beryl, what's Beryl's name? Woo, glory. Ministers at, at the ministry. Felicia, what's I? I can call names to validate. They've seen the power. And I can tell you all the people. Hallelujah. I will call all their names. Who've seen the power of the angelic powers that drove demonic spirits out of people and, 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 and came to assist with the deliverance. I've seen it. I know what I'm talking about. Believe me. And so those angels, that's it. Psalm 91. Those angels are not there just to do deliverance, but they're around you 24-7 if you're a part of this kingdom. And they know who are part of the kingdom. They know who's a part of the government of God. Why? You, 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 you can talk it all you want, but the angels have invisible eyes. They have an eyes that could look at an individual, just like Jesus said here. The Pharisees said, when is the kingdom? Jesus said, the kingdom is in you. So the angels of the Lord, praise God, they could look and see who really belongs to the King Jesus. Don't mind those who are wearing the long white gown. Some angels look at them and walk past because they know that person appears to the world that they are with Christ, but they're not. There is a mark on those of us who are truly a part of the government of God. And when we are a part of the government of the Lord Jesus Christ, the angels could see the mark. Likewise, demons can see the mark as well. Let's move quickly. Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. Give me five minutes and I'm getting ready to pray. Five or ten minutes, I'm getting ready to pray. I'm getting ready to prophesy. Get people on here now, quickly. We're talking about the government of Jesus, the rule and reign of Christ. Daniel 2 and 44, it says, Daniel says, in those days... Of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed. Write this down for yourself. Read it for yourself. Jesus is going to establish a kingdom that will never be destroyed. Nor will its sovereignty be left to another people. But it will break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and will stand forever. Listen here, listen here. I've read the scripture, I've read this Bible, and no one can tell me nothing much about it. Uh, no foolishness. You know what can come in? No bunch of foolishness to me. Y'all better listen and read your Bible and make note. And don't get tied up with a bunch of nonsense people talking about. A bunch of devils. A bunch of wicked hypocrites. You better get in this word for yourself. Because there's going to be a great deception in these last days. You can't deceive me. My wife and I, we pray. We pray in the Holy Spirit. And we meditate on the word day and night. Don't come with your deception because it ain't going to work. Don't come with your lies. Don't come with your hypocrisy. Don't come with your cunning, crafty schemes and schisms. We don't have time. It ain't going to work. I ain't even going to hear you. Because I can look by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, through the word of God, said, that's a phony. That's a fake. Hallelujah. Daniel 7, verse 13 to 14. I saw in the night visions. Behold, there came with the clouds of the sky, one like a son of man. This is Jesus coming with the angels. And he came even to the ancient of days, and they brought him there before him. Dominion was given him. Watch this now. Jesus' kingdom will have what? Daniel 7, verse 14. Dominion was given him, and glory, and a kingdom that all the peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. That's why I have a problem with Jehovah Witness. Because they believe 144,000. How in the world 144,000 only could be saved? When Daniel saw in a vision that Jesus, first of all, is King and Lord. 
that Jesus has given a dominion, and Jesus has given glory, and Jesus has given a government or a kingdom that all the peoples. That's why Hinduism can be the saving message. Because Hinduism is for Hindus, and Hindus are Indians only. What happened to the rest of the six billion people in the world? Some of Hindus believe only them are the right people. And that Hinduism is the prevailing religion or culture or ideology that should be for all Indians. And they shouldn't leave that. Well, that's an exclusive group. And I know oh, that can't be the true message of a loving God and creator and maker who made all human beings. No, it's a racist religion. Are you hearing me, those in India? Hinduism is a racist religion. It hates, it causes uh, people to hate other nations and other philosophies and other people of different races, cultures, and ideology. Why? Because it's an indoctrination that we are, that Hindus are right and we are only, and by the way, many people are now worshipping in Hinduism. When you do yoga, when you pierce up your body and tattoo up your body, that you're going into the occult, you're going into the satanic kingdom. You've engaged, and I'm going to pray about that. I'm going to have a teaching coming up on that. If you've passed up your body, if you've tattooed up your body, if you've joined a secret society or fraternity, sorority, you are not, you You got to make a decision if you're going to be in the kingdom of God or you're going to be in your launch. Oh yeah, I said it. That's why many people, I studied genealogy as I studied some people and I look at what happened, diseases and sickness came upon their life. I look at their parents and grandparents and see that their parents and grandparents were in certain uh, societies. And they pledged them and their families to these satanic orders. There are some people who tattoo too. You know that the, when I study tattooing the, the, in the ancient religions, the, the priests, the satanic priests, the worshiping priests would do the piercings. And so every time, what happens when a person gets a tattoo? What happens? The needle pierces, blood is shed. Every time there's blood shed, that's a covenantal thing. In the Bible and in scripture and even in the satanic world, if they want to do witchcraft, they sacrifice an animal, a sheep, a goat, a human life. Jesus had to shed his blood. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. There's life in the blood. And so every time someone is pierced, and I watch, my wife and I were looking around, we said, oh my God, there's so many people with tattoos. And I said, Lord, there's so many people when it's time for deliverance. Can they be saved? Yes, some of them who have tattoos know Jesus, but their life will always go in a certain dimension unless they break that curse. Unless they renounce it and say, Lord Jesus, these piercings in my ears, in my nose, in my tongue, in my eye, all these parts of my body where I pierce, all these parts of my body where I tattooed, all these parts of the body where I altered, I open up the door to satanic attack. I open the door to satanic realms. Now you got preachers who are coming on now. You got guys who want to be so cool and so hip. Huh? Who's supposed to be prophets and pastors and worship leaders and they're leading a lot of young people to hell because they're tattooing up themselves and they got a lot of young people doing it because these NBA stars and these sports stars and movie stars are tattooing up themselves and don't know that when you come into Jesus' kingdom, you don't tattoo your body. The Bible said, do not put any marking or piercings on your body. I'm going to show you that later on. Well, pastor, you old fashioned. Well, stay right there. Stay bound. Stay sick. Stay defeated. Stay tormented, stay in your demonic organizations, stay in your occultish groups, stay with your witchcraft, stay in, in uh, you know, go into your mother and your occult groups to burn, you know, incense for you, keep burning your money, burning spray, keep playing your lotto, your numbers, keep going to soup sale, keep gambling, keep dealing in the occult, keep going to the Hindu priest, keep practicing your yoga, keep practicing your Islam, keep practicing your Hebrew Israelite, Keep, keep practicing all this stuff. Keep going to your Africa, African spiritualist. Keep going to your animalistic belief. Keep going to the worship of your African ancestors. Keep going to them and you will stay bound because you will stay under the kingdom of
of Satan. You stand in his rule. You stand in his authority. You stand in his government. Stay with your pornography. Stay with your drunkenness. Stay with your marijuana your smoking and thinking it's going to help you. You're going to stay in these things and you're going to stay under the influence of Satan's kingdom until he kills you if you don't repent. Well, if I have a tattoo, what do I do? We're going to renounce it a little bit. Stay here. We pray for people with tattoos and piercing and drive demons out that came in through those. You don't have to tell me nothing. I know what I'm saying. I know what I've seen. No one can tell me otherwise in this world or the world to come. I've seen the power of God. If you're piercing, you need to, you know, if you have tattoos, you're going to get that oil and anoint that area and say, Lord, I repent for marking up your temple, your body. And I break it. And if your children have it, break it. They will never come into the fullness of the call of God in their life. They will never live sexually pure. I, I study people who have these tattoos. They can never stay sexually pure. They always in and out of bad relationship. They always in and out of sickness and disease. They always have something going on in their life. Their, their minds are tormented. They're always broken. They're always driven to drunkenness and drugs and alcohol. I study this professionally and I've seen it with my own life over the many years. And I see it. You must renounce and break these things to be set free and to come into the fullness of Jesus' kingdom. You must renounce yoga. You must renounce going to the occult. You must renounce going to these new age teachings and philosophies. You must renounce the satanic music. What do I mean? You can't be in the government of God listening to stuff. Uh, my wife and I, I'm going to close out and pray. You got to pick this up. Uh, maybe I'll come back tonight and finish this. Daniel 7, 14. Dominion was given in him, and glory, and a kingdom, and all the people's nations and languages sh shall serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. You might not like this, but Jesus' kingdom is going to prevail. You could stay in darkness, but Jesus is going to prevail. You could stay being bound, but Jesus will prevail. You could stay in your uh, gambling addiction, but Jesus' kingdom is moving on. You could stay mocking the church, bashing the church, knocking the leaders, knocking the things of God, laughing at the Holy Spirit, laughing and thinking you're getting away and you're escaping life because your money and your degree and your career and you think you're smarter than God now, you think you know more than God and you think you're going to escape through life because of, you know, your, whatever you think you've accomplished. Stay right there. Jesus' kingdom is going to advance whether you want it or not. Which shall not pass away and his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. Jesus' kingdom is going to go on. Yes. The Lord said, there's someone who came on and came off. Let them keep playing with me. In this hour, the Lord says, there's some people who are mocking the prophet. Yeah, laugh and mock at me all you want. Try to make a problem. But know that you're not coming up against me because I am nothing without Jesus Christ. You can laugh and mock. You're mocking the Holy Ghost. You're mocking the kingdom of Jesus. You're mocking the power of God. Be careful in this hour. That's for someone's word of knowledge. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 24 and 25. I'm going to close on this one. Then the end comes. Watch this now. The end is going to come. When he will deliver up the kingdom of uh, kingdom to the Father, even the Father, when he will have abolished all rule and all authority and all power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. Let me tell you something. The gospel of the kingdom is about ruling and reigning and kingdoms clashing against other kingdoms. This is not some religious hanky-panky. This is not some feel-good gospel. Oh, I feel good today. The Lord is so good. Yes, he makes us feel good. He gives us the joy of the Lord. He gives us his peace. But in the bigger frame of things, the bigger story, the global picture is that Jesus is bringing this whole system to the end. And he's going to deliver this kingdom back to Jehovah Adonai, Elohim. He's going to take all of the mess of this world 
and its systems and prayerfully through the saints like you and I who made Jesus our Lord. He's going to use us to bring this world one last time to hearing this message of the kingdom and those who receive it. The Bible said, and this gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all the world. Matthew 24 and 14. And to all nations, then the end shall come. I'm doing my part to get this message out. I told Shalei with the other day, I believe the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ is reaching all the world now. It's happening. And one day the end will come. And everyone that heard the kingdom, whether they received it or rejected it or not, Jesus is going to take this world system and the ownership. He's going to knock out Lucifer. He's going to knock out Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam. He's going to knock out a secular, secular humanism. He's going to knock out uh, humanism and animal worship. He's going to knock out mocking and laughing and scorning and the occult. He's going to knock out atheism and he is going to show all the world and satan that he is king and he is god and he's going to take his place and he's going to put this world in the right position and show the leaders how to run the nations u.n is not going to run the nations united nations is not going to run the nation jesus is going to run the nations and he's going to operate and govern with equity. He's going to operate in fairness. He's, going to, he's not going to be prejudiced. He's not going to help third world and first world. All these things man have created. He's not going to pe treat people uh, a second class citizen because they're black or they're Indian or they're Hispanic. He's not going to give to some rich a first world nation and leave the poor uh, uh, third world nation we call it without food and water and shelter he's going to be a just and equitable God he's going to be a king that rules in fairness and justice and all will receive who receive them will receive a place to rule and reign with him hallelujah this is the gospel this is the hope on which we stand not some panic cake pancake flimsy milky down watered down message i deal with the meat of the word the truth of the word that is able to transform your life and give you hope there is a great hope in this message hallelujah the hell with the devil i'm not into any wishy-washy games this is life and death this is serious and those who are watching i got a word for you if you stay to the end this Jesus will take authority and he's going to give it to you. Those of you who need it, just lift up your hands wherever you are. Wherever you are. If you don't know Jesus Christ as King and Lord, I invite you into his government. The most stable government. The hell with the devil, family and friends. You go after Jesus Christ, your Lord. He's the only one you have to please. He's the only one you have to serve. He's the only one you have to follow. He's the only one that you have to live your life for. Stop living your life for family and friends and people. Stop living your life to please everyone. And losing sleep. Breaking up your life. Losing money. Losing time. Get focused. Stop trying to please everyone. Get to know your God. Isaiah 9 and 6. The people that know their God shall be strong and shall be do great exploit. Stop trying to please a bishop, a pastor, a prophet. Get to know Jesus. Get to please him. Get to live for him. Get to know him. And he is coming back. And you will rule with him. Because he's going to rule. He's going to reign. He's going to destroy that nasty devil that tormented you and your family all your life. That nasty devil that afflicted you with sickness and disease. That nasty devil that tied up your family. That nasty devil that killed some of your loved ones and your family and friends. That nasty devil that came in and wrecked, wrecked havoc on the earth. He is coming to crush Satan and he's going to bound them in hell. Hallelujah. Through his powerful blood. Through the cross, through the mighty angels of the Lord, he's going to bound Satan, I wish I had time, and bound him into hell. But you, he will rule and reign, and you will do likewise with him. Come into the government. I speak as an agent of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come to the government. Come to the government of heaven. 
Stop putting your trust in worldly systems and government. Unless the Holy Spirit said, I want you to do this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Or seek ye first the government of God and his way of doing things. Everything you need shall be added. I speak over your life today as we pray. I see right now in the realm of the spirit scales of many of you listening and watching are coming off. The idolatry that you once lived in, the shame, the disgrace, the feeling of pleasing everyone else is dropping off your life. The burden that you are ikalabasa. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The burden that was on the lives of so many people are coming off now in Jesus' name. The fear of disease, corona, poverty, lack, sickness, trouble, torment, death, and dying is breaking right now. You and I are being set free. We are trusting the Lord, whether you're in the, the heart of Africa or Southeast Asia, the continent of Europe, if you're in New York City, Los Angeles, Toronto, Canada, or Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. All around the world, our only hope can be built in Christ. I speak today that family salvation. Some of you, get ready to pray. You're praying for your family. I can't pray for everyone, but I'm praying today. That as for me and my household and my family, you, cuz, I'm praying for all my cousins today. Come on, pray with me. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, you've given me first position to know you as Lord and Savior for myself. So, Lord, I surrender to your government, your lordship and your rulership in Jesus' name. Father, secondly, I pray for the lordship and the rulership and the authority of Jesus Christ. I know you need to renounce. Some of you need to renounce some organizations, some things that you were a part of. Lord, I renounce every Satan, satanic thing, every occult group, every group. I, I don't even know. Whatever the Holy Spirit shows you, I renounce it off of my life and off of the life of so many others. In my family, I break the curse of my generation. Come on, break it. And Lord, I surrender to you and I declare that you are Lord of my family over my cousins, over my aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters, extended family. I pray, Lord, for my nation and my city. I pray, Lord, that my colleagues, I pray, come on, pray for me, everyone who's listening and watching. Lord, I pray that they would come into the saving knowledge of Christ before it's too late. Whether they live or die or whether you come, whichever comes first. That everyone listening today, share this with somebody. But come to know you as Lord. We put the games aside. No more time to play games. The devil is on a rampage and he's taking people to hell by the thousands every day. In our nation every week by the hundreds. People are dying. Around the world, people by the thousands are dying every day. Not only from Corona, but everything else. And Lord, if they don't know you, they're being driven. Hell is being enlarged. Lord, I pray this message reaches the nations of the earth. That all men, black, white, of every race, every tribe, every color, would know you as Savior today. And accept you as Lord. Lord, I pray every covenant we've made with any organization, with the occult, with witchcraft, sorcery, any divination, any body where we pledge our body, our blood, any organization we join where we have to renounce our right to walk with Christ, to join that organization, whatever it is, or whatever organization we've joined that worship the ancient gods of Egypt and of Greek, Greek gods, we pledge to these Greek gods, whether in college or outside of college, or wherever it was. We pledge our lives ignorantly, not knowing the consequences. We renounce it. Any society, any group, any organization that denies the power of Jesus Christ as Lord and King only and opens up to an acceptance of anything else. Lord, if our family, my grandparents, parents, Great grandparents, any uncles, aunts, cousin, anybody who has joined this organization that causes the, 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 the curse to flow upon all the family members. I renounce it of my generation right now, of my life and my family right now. And I break the curse. 
and I renounce it. Lord, any other thing that I've worshipped more than you, Lord Jesus. Come on, this is for everyone to pray. Come on, I feel the Lord is setting people free. Lord, if I've worshipped apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, teacher, if I've worshipped church, if I've worshipped a certain personality more than you, I repent. If I've worshipped you, God, a television evangelist more than you, if I've worshipped myself more than you, if I've worshipped, you know, oh God, the government more than you, if I've worshipped a sports team, if I've worshipped, you know, organization, if I've worshipped my job, my car, my money, my degree, my profession, whatever I've worshipped more than you, Lord Jesus, whatever, maybe parents, sometimes we worship our parents, they're the God in our lives, I repent, sometimes it's our children, we worship our children, they can do no wrong, even if they're doing everything wrong, we don't have the guts to correct them, because we worship them, we idolize them, hallelujah, we worship them more than Christ Jesus, because when the Lord tells us something to correct, mother, father, sister, brother, family, cousin, or friend, we don't want to tell them, because we worship them, they are everything in our lives, so we think, Lord, today I renounce worshiping anything or anybody more than serving you. And I come fully in your government. For this we give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for watching us. We love you all so much. Thank you for staying to the end. And again, there is a blessing. Anytime you stay to the end, it means you have a love and a focus for the Lord. And so I speak, speak a special kingdom blessing on your life. Favor, goodness, grace. Not because of me, but I speak it under the spirit of the Lord to you. And believe this prophet. Believe this prophet. So shall you prosper. Believe in the word of the Lord, so shall you be established. And believe as prophet, so shall you prosper. I speak prosperity in your life. I speak your eyes of being open. You won't be deceived by this end time wickedness that is hitting the earth. This deception. These lies that are filling the earth. Shalei, when I love you, we ask you pray for us as we pray for you. We are humans. We love the Lord. We need your prayers because we need the strength of the Lord ourselves and our family. We're trusting the Lord as you are. We're no different. And then because no pastor, no leader is no different. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, teacher. Pray for every pastor out there that they will stay on the firing line and that they will renounce idolatry and they will humble themselves to be the servants of God's people. Pray for them. Pray that they don't lose focus in this hour. Pray for your families. Pray for those who are lost. Don't let them die and go to hell. Many of our family members have died and are going to hell. You might have tried sharing the gospel with them and they're not listening. I've tried with so many. They haven't listened, so I release them. And I'm just praying for them quietly that they will make Jesus Christ their Lord. I really pray. I don't want to go to any funeral where I got to speak and I know the person did not accept Jesus as Lord. How would you know? Well, I don't want them to just wait for the last minute and try to hop in and skip and take the gospel on their deathbed. I want them to know Jesus now. I want to be able to tell their children and family that yes, they made it in for sure, that you don't have to lie and worry about it. Don't, don't, don't run. Jesus needs you to do that. The Lord wants you to make sure that your loved ones know Jesus Christ as Lord. Whether we're gonna, whether Corona or just old age, we're gonna be out of here. We're not gonna be in this life forever. This old life is passing away. We have a short period of time to get to know Jesus Christ as Lord for real. I gave you all the scripture. Go back over this and listen to this. Go in your Bible and study it for yourself. Don't let some old organization tell you what you should believe and not believe. You have a Bible, you have your brain, and you ask the Lord, Jehovah, to guide you by His Holy Spirit to see the truth for yourself. Don't be deceived in this hour. We love you so much. If you want to continue to be a blessing, uh, we have a few books here. We have written a few books here. This is one on sonship. You are my father. I'm your son. Understanding kingdom sonship. Go to Amazon and get this or reach out to us. Get a copy of this. This is uh, 
a lifetime relationship, 52 week devotional by Shalewa, Connie, and I, and uh, it is rocking the world. Then we have our last series, The Kingdom, The Power, The Glory. This is actually a four part book series. This is The Kingdom, Part One, The Kingdom, Part Two, The Power and the Glory from the Lord's Prayer, Matthew chapter 6. And it will go over all the stuff we talked about today about the rule and reign of Jesus Christ. Not only when he destroys this old world later on, but now, 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 come into the kingdom of God. I thank you for watching this. We love you again. Your last will call here, signing off. You can go, yes, Shalewa, thank you so much. Uh, she and the team, uh, she's led the team to getting all of this production. I'm just so grateful to her and all these books. Chantel, yes, praise God. That's my darling cousin, Bridget. I see your aunt. <laughs> These books can be purchased on Amazon. If you want a copy, please let me know. I'll send it to you, Chantel. We would love you to have these. Get this in your library. It will bless your life. We spent time doing this, and it's, these books have gone around the world. And all, you know, I want my family to have this. I don't want the world to be blessed and others don't have it. Go to Amazon.com or that link right there, www.kingdomtrilogy.com. If you have a Kindle, it can be downloaded right away. If you want a hard copy, you should buy it from Amazon as well. Or you can get to uh, private messages and get these to you. It will bless your life. Thank you, woman of God. I'll be happy to get these to you. Because that's my cousin. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for her and Veronica who stayed on and shared this. And this you know, uh, baby's children. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we thank you for just joining us over the last few weeks and really praying with us. And uh, I love you all. I know it's a hard message sometimes, family, but this is where we are. These trying times need a real message. And, you know, I've come from other, like uh, Rodney Roberts and those uh, powerful teachers, prophets. And they don't play with the word because people's lives are at stake. When we finish this, we laugh and talk. But while we're under that anointing to teach the gospel, guys, we just teach it. Why? Because we love you and we want everyone to make it into glory. We want to see everyone make it into heaven. We want to see you and I protected. And we want to see you and I make it in. Leon Hannah, my goodness, thank you for staying on. Uh, Brother Hannah, I, God bless you. Thank you for staying on. I'm so glad you came on. Look out for us on Sundays, but maybe through the weeks. Look out, I'll put a fly and let you know. Brother, we, this, I didn't even touch my phone notes yet. Guys, I'm telling you, this is all my notes here. This is all my notes here, and I'm telling you, I didn't even get to touch the surface. So I'll be teaching on this topic for a few sessions. Uh, the rule and reign of Christ, the government of God, and God's government, the stable government. And so, yes, Hannah, thank you for joining. Thank you for being a part. Veronica, thank you. Shalewa, thank you. Anyone else listening or watching, I want to just give a shout out quickly, please. Praise the Lord. Anybody, 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 anybody else just say your name here so I can pray with you, recognize you. <laughs> if not, we're going to close on. Kant, my brother, Pastor Kant from India. Praise God. God bless you. We love you. I'm a part of Kami family. You know, we have a Kami ministry. Please go to our web page, www.kamgbahamas.com. That's www.kamg. Bahamas, B A H A M A S dot com. You can look up more of our powerful message and what our ministry is about. You can get all of these teachings on YouTube to like and subscribe to YouTube at K A M I, Kami Bahamas. Kami, Kami Bahamas. We have hundreds of videos there. And of course, go to power, www power and glory, P O W E R A N D, glory, G L O R Y T V. TV. The label's going to put that there and you can see so much more of, of, of hundreds of teachings that we've done over the years. And I've said enough. I love you so much. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord bless your going out and coming in. May the Lord preserve you all the days of your life and keep you. In Jesus' name we pray. And to God be all the glory. Amen. God bless you. Amen.
Thank you. Good luck, Lex.